Hi, Dr. Shu here from Lyme Plastic Surgery in Los Angeles. Today we're going to talk a little bit about fat transfer to the buttocks, or fat grafting, also known as the Brazilian butt lift or BBL. So the BBL um, fat transfer to the buttocks procedure has gotten pretty popular over the past few years. Um, a lot of patients are coming in asking for a slightly better shape to their bodies. Um, in particular, there's more of a um, more emphasis nowadays a little bit on the buttocks and not just on the breasts, which has traditionally sort of been one of the most popular areas for plastic surgery. Um, so with fat transfer to the buttocks or BBL, what we're really trying to do is move some fat from one part of the body where we don't really want it so much and put it into the buttocks so people can have a nice kind of rounder or a little bit like an S shape on the side view. And so we're essentially transferring fat cells from one part of the body to another part and trying to get that to survive and in the process giving patients a, a better shape. Um, good candidates are patients that have a little bit of a moderate size to their body. Not really big, not really small, but sort of a moderate size. Uh, patients who come in who are skinnier, and we have quite a few of them, we'll ask them to gain some weight, actually. Um, it's one of the few times that a doctor will tell you it's okay to eat what you want, okay to gain a little bit of weight, and it's because we're preparing for a surgical procedure. After the patients have enough uh, fat cells, uh, whether to begin with or after their diet change for a few months, um, then we'll do the procedure. And what the procedure entails essentially is starting with um, pretty much traditional liposuction, what you guys are pretty familiar with, which is patients you know, starting lying down on the operating table, um, uh, put to sleep, and um, we'll take the fat from a few different areas, usually often the, the abdomen, upper abdomen, lower abdomen, sometimes the thighs, front thighs, outer thighs, inner thighs, um, occasionally the arms, really just depends on that patient's fat distribution and where they want the fat taken from. Um, and once that's done, then um, we'll turn the patient over and we'll begin to, um, to put the fat into the buttocks. The fat for us, what we do at line is to process the fat first. Every, um, every location and every uh, surgical clinic will do it differently. Our protocol is to process the fat first, um, and we do that by washing with antibiotics and to strain it, so we're really putting in pure fat and really not incorporating a lot of the extra fluid that kind of comes with the liposuction. Um, we believe that it gives better results, it's a little bit more predictable. Um, the volume that we see is really the, the true fat volume that's injected and not volume just from, from fluid, which I think doesn't stay. Um, so after the washing with the antibiotics and the straining of the fat and making sure everything is very clean, then we'll inject the fat in very small amounts. In very tiny amounts, we'll put it in many, many locations in the buttocks, sort of in areas that we agree with the patient ahead of time, that we mark while the patient's standing and you know they, they'll kind of tell us where they want a little bit more um, augmentation. Whether that's on the side of the buttocks, sometimes there's dimples that they want to fill in. Whether it's from side view, they want a little bit more um, more projection backwards in the buttocks. We'll kind of target those areas based on our markings, and we put it in. We put a lot of fat in, but in a lot of very small little uh, amounts. And the idea is that by spreading that fat out into many different areas, we can get better survival. And with better survival comes better results. The ultimate goal is to have a lot of the fat stay and to survive long term. And so that's best achieved by having things um, kind of spread out. For safety purposes, um, we'll really put the fat above the muscle. We won't really go into the muscle itself. There's different ways to do the procedure, and I think traditionally in the past, um, sometimes surgeons have purposely tried to put things in the muscle for better survival. But for safety reasons, we like to stay outside the muscle. We think it's uh, safer for the patient, and we want to give them a very nice predictive result. That's given us very good results and without compromising safety. So that's sort of our, our approach to, um, to placing the fat. In terms of patient recovery, um, after the procedure, patients wear a compression garment and they'll keep that compression garment on for about six weeks. Uh, we like to kind of give it some compression so things don't swell too much, so we can kind of control the shape. Um, and it sort of has a couple of different purposes. One purpose is just like with traditional liposuction, we like to push on the skin so the skin shrink wraps a little bit about, around the body. The areas where we took the fat from, we want those to shrink. And for the fat transfer area, for the buttocks, we like to kind of keep the fat in place and not really give it a chance to move around. And that really lets us really control the result and really to maximize the survival of the fat that we've moved over. Um, for the first two weeks, um, if patients can, we do prefer that the patients stay on their bellies. So when they're sleeping, kind of sleeping on their bellies and maybe with their head to the side or something like that so that they're not putting too much pressure on the, on the buttocks. 
in reality, with the um, compression garment, actually, if they're sleeping on their buttocks, it's we haven't found any issue with regards to, to, to uh, fat survival. But generally, we prefer that if patients can tolerate it. In terms of result, what patients can expect is, for the first couple of weeks, it will be a little bit swollen, just like with any kind of surgery. For six weeks, really, it takes a lot, some time for a swelling to go down. Um, first couple of days, swelling will increase, and then it will kind of come down over the first six weeks. After six weeks, um, at that point, then we're kind of waiting for things to kind of mature and settle down. Some of the fat will go away. Um, not all of it will survive. Some of the fat cells will go away in the first probably three to six months. But whatever remains after six months should be there long term. It means that the, the body has really incorporated those cells and should be able to keep in, uh, feed, feeding those cells and keeping them alive for the long term. So that's one of the nice things about the procedure is that patients do have some long term benefit um, and doesn't really go away over time.